Hello YouTube and welcome to my video on the hero of Kavach. This has been a much requested subject ever since I did a video on the lifespan and backstory of the Nereverine. In this video I will go over the lifespan of the hero of Kavach, so basically the events of Oblivion. So if you're an Elder Scrolls fan and planning to play Oblivion in the future, I suggest you leave a like and then turn off the video, since this will spoil the entire Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion main quest and its DLCs. That said, let's kick off. One day, a random prisoner was by accident placed in an otherwise off-limits cell. The guard that had put him there could not have foreseen the fact that by doing so he would save Tamriel. For one day, when the prisoner woke up in his cell, there were Blades agents at his cell door, and they were escorting the Emperor out of the Imperial City after his sons had been assassinated. This is where the story of Oblivion really begins. The Emperor recognizes this prisoner as a figure from his dreams and decides to free the prisoner. The prisoner then for a brief time helps escorting the Emperor out of the city, but to no avail because the Emperor is killed by the Mythic Dawn assassins on their way to the outside. The Emperor however gave the freed prisoner the Amulet of Kings and told him to bring it to Joffrey, the Grand Master of the Blades, now disguised as a monk in Wayne Priory. After escaping the Imperial City sewer system, the prisoner made his way to Wayne and Priory, where Joffrey resides. Joffrey, however, is angered by the appearance of the prisoner, as he suspects the prisoner to have something to do with Emperor Uriel's death. But after explaining the situation, he sends the prisoner to the city of Kvarch to find Uriel's last bastard son, so his son can reignite the dragon fires in the Temple of the One, something only a dragonborn can do. The prisoner, making his way to Kvarch, finds a camp full of refugees that reportedly came from Kvarch. The prisoner soon discovers that Kvarch has been attacked by the forces of Oblivion, emerging from an Oblivion gate that had just been placed in an attempt to kill Uriel's last son, Martin Septim. The prisoner then charges into the Oblivion gate by himself, in a last attempt to close it. Contrary to all expectations, he manages to close the Oblivion gate giving the guards a chance to retake the city. The prisoner, soon after returning from Oblivion, meets with Martin, as he and the remaining Kvarch guards liberate the Kvarch temple. However, Martin does not want to come with the prisoner until Kvarch is freed. Therefore, the prisoner helps the Kvarch guards to retake the city and is dubbed the Hero of Kvarch. Then he and Martin return to Wayne Priory, only to find it being attacked by the forces of, Ob of Oblivion as well. Then he and Martin fight their way to Joffrey, who is still somewhere in the Par Priory, to find that the old master had survived, but could not have prevented the Amulet of Kings being stolen. Joffrey and Martin then station themselves at Cloud Ruler Temple, the higher headquarter of the Blades, while the hero of Kvarch further investigated the Mythic Dawn. By solving the puzzles in the four books, Commentaries on the Mythic Dawn, written by Mythic Dawn leader Menkar Cameron, he manages to find the Mythic Dawn's base of operations. There he infiltrated the base, acting as a member of the Mythic Dawn. And there he would find Menkar Cameron giving a passionate speech only to see him disappear with the Amulet of Kings through a portal to a new plane of oblivion that he calls Paradise. The hero, in an effort to stop Cameron, blows his disguise and has to fight each and every Mythic Dawn member present. After this, the hero finds the book written by Maroon's Dagon, the Mysterium Xarxes. It was this book Cameron had used to create his own paradise, his own plane of oblivion, and thus the hero stole it from the Mythic Dawn base and brought it to Cloud Ruler Temple to Martin. There, Martin immediately started deciphering the book, in an attempt to create a portal to Cameron's paradise to get the Amulet of Kings back. Martin soon discovers the materials needed to open a portal to paradise, and the hero ventures into Cyrodiil to acquire them. After lengthy adventures, the hero manages to get his hand on three of the four required objects. A Diedrich artifact, the armor of Tiber Septim for the Divine Blood, and a Great Wilkin Stone. The only material left is a great sigil stone, which is only obtainable through a large oblivion gate. Joffrey, Martin and the hero quickly devise a plan to make the mythic dawn attack Bruma using an ob oblivion gate. The city nearest to Cloud Ruler Temple is Bruma and thus it is logical that they would attack there as this is close to the blades. This way they lure the mythic dawn into attacking the city of Bruma 
and after acquiring a lot of troops from all over Cyrodiil to aid Bruma, the hero of Kvarts, together with Martin himself, fought the forces of Oblivion once more. There the hero once again made his way into Oblivion by himself and managed to close the gate and obtain the Great Sigil Stone. Now everything is set for Martin to spawn a portal to Cameron's paradise. The hero and Martin spawn the portal in Cloud Ruler Temple and the hero ventures into paradise. In paradise the hero of Kvarts discovers that, that is not as much as a paradise because the seized Mythic Dawn members are promised by Menkar Cameron a place in his paradise. But the hero finds out that it is only a paradise for Cameron and his family himself as the souls of the death Mythic Dawn members are put to torture there. After seeing this the hero of Kvarts made his way to Cameron's palace and slays Cameron and all his family members. This triggers the destruction of paradise and the hero is returned to Mundus with the amulet of kings back in his hands. Martin and the hero of Kvarts then make their way to the imperial city to end the oblivion crisis. In a last effort to stop them, Maroon's Dagon launches a final attack against the city, led by himself. The hero and Martin quickly make their way to the Temple of the One to light the fires, but it was already too late, since an aspect of Maroon's Dagon had already entered Mundus and made his way to the Temple of the One. Then, as Maroon Dagon rip uh, rips open the ceiling of the Temple of the One, Martin shatters the Amulet of Kings and frees the divine power of Akatosh within. He uses it to tra transform into an avatar of Akatosh and cast Dagon Black into oblivion, forever. Martin is now dead and Dagon cast back. This is where the main quest of oblivion ends, but the story of the hero of Kvarts, now champion of Cyrodiil, continues. As he keeps wandering through the land, another crisis started. An ancient Aeliot king, Ulmeril the Unfeathered, was released from his oblivion imprisonment. He returned to Tamriel, wanting to have vengeance for his downfall by the hands of the Divine Crusader, Pelennor Whitestrake. For the backstory on that story, I recommend watching my Pelennor Whitestrake video. It is at one of the eye icons right now. Guided by the ghost of Pelennor Whitestrake and the new Knights of the Nine, the hero ultimately managed to defeat Ulmeril the Unfeathered after finding the ancient relics of the Divine Crusader. This new crisis was then over and the Knights of the Nine restored. I'm sorry for rushing through this part, but I plan to someday do a separate video about it, because, well, then I can get into detail. So sorry for not going in depth. After the crisis with Ilmaril the Unfeathered, the hero ventured to the Shivering Isles. Diedrich Prince Shio Gorath had made a door to the Shivering Isles appear in Cyrodiil to invite mortals to come in. It is later revealed that he was searching for a mortal to become his champion, and the hero of Kvarts decides to go in. The hero ventures then to Shiogorath's plane of oblivion, the Shivering Isles, and learns the story of how Shiogorath came to be, for he was once Jigalak, Diedrich Prince of Order, but that he had one day been cursed into Shiogorath, Diedrich Prince of Madness. Jigalak was doomed to live like this for the rest of eternity, only at the end of every era he would be transformed back to Jigalak for one day in an event known as the Grey March to right the wrongs of Siogoret and then only to fall back to madness the next day. This cycle of madness ended when the hero of Kvarts defeated Jigalak during the Grey March, thereby freeing him from his curse. This however caused the hero of Kvarts to become the new Siogoret, so in fact the hero of Kvarts is still alive during the events of Skyrim. We even meet him as Siogoret. We know for a fact that Shiogorath and Skyrim is the hero of Kvarts, as he, during his conversation with Pelagius the Mad, tells the deceased emperor that he was there when Martin sacrificed himself and became an avatar of Akatosh to save the land from the forces of Oblivion. This is very interesting, as I personally wonder if the Grey March also applies to the hero of Kvarts. Is he also being transformed back at the end of every era? Leave your thoughts about that in the comments below. And guys, that was it my video on the hero of Kvarts or champion of Cyrodiil. There are many things I have missed, I know, but I wanted to keep this video a reasonable length and maybe one day give some things their own video like the Knights of the Nine for a more detail on the subject. That said, I hope you guys liked the video, leave a like, subscribe if you want to and if you're interested in following updates on the channel and lore discussions, join my steam group, there's a link in the description. I want to leave it at that. I hope you guys liked the video and I'll see you next time.